All right, here is our brain. Now, it is not this colorful, uh, but this does make it easier. So we'll start here at the prefrontal cortex, right at the front of your brain. Uh, this is not fully developed uh, for males until age 25. For women, they develop this much quicker. It's why they mature quicker. So this is the risk-taking part of your brain. This is what tells you, hey, you shouldn't do that. And for guys, doesn't really exist until age 25. But let's be honest, sometimes we know much older guys than that that just don't care about risk at all. They're fearless. So that's what the prefrontal cortex does, risk assessment. Now, the thalamus, that's responsible for your good decisions. And so when you learn something, you're like, great, I'm going to do this with, if I am ever presented with that situation. So your thalamus is ready to go there. However, the amygdala, the amygdala, I don't know quite know how to say that, I'm gonna screw it up, so we'll just go with the amygdala, I think that's correct. That's the animal part of your brain. That is the fight or flight. So your thalamus says, hey, let's do this. The amygdala goes, no, 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 I got this. And quite often it doesn't, because it's fight or flight. It's the animal part of our brain. It's our brain that's been around for thousands of years that's pr protected us from wild animals chasing us. We don't have to worry about that right now, but things have changed so fast that the amygdala is still there ready to protect us. Uh, it takes much longer for the thalamus to be in control over the amygdala. And that's where a bunch of practice and preparation comes in. So what exactly happens to our brains when we're faced with a stressful situation? A car turns in front of us, animal jumps out, now we're rushed with new information, information we know that could possibly really hurt us. So that's a stressful situation. And when our brains are stressed, cortisol rushes into our blood system. And this short circuits our brain's ability to make a good decision. So our prefrontal cortex, now under cortisol, short circuits that. So that's why when we're stressed out, our brain has no good ideas. And so it's really challenging because now we're with the information we're faced at, the situation that's dangerous, our brains aren't really helping us. So what do we do? How do we navigate that situation if our own brains aren't gonna help us out? We don't wanna get comfortable on motorcycles, we wanna get confident. Being comfortable, enjoying the ride, I mean, that's great, but all the hard decisions we have to make to stay safe come under potentially stressful situations and you need a certain level of confidence for that. Can't have too much, but you can't, certainly can't have too little either. So try to keep a beginner state of mind when riding. You're never as good as you really think you are. The more you think you got this, the more motorcycling will tell you, you don't got it. And that's the world we live in too. It is completely imperfect. Doesn't matter where you ride. Any place you can ride motorcycles, there are dangers there for you. Now, another interesting thing is laughing. When we laugh about something, it doesn't seem so serious. And when you start to ride motorcycles or you're an active motorcycle rider, you may find that the humor gets a little dark at times. And that's our risk coping mechanism. It's similar to how Quentin Tarantino movies are so successful. I mean, a lot of stuff in those movies is absolutely terrifying, but it's presented in a humorous light. We laugh about it, that eh, doesn't seem that bad. It's just a good movie now. Uh, and that's the same with motorcycling. If you're ever joking around with your buddies about awful things and it's kind of funny, that's just how you are all justifying what you're doing as lower risk. Because laughing just makes it seem all right. 